Watch who's about to walk into the booth. Three, <laughs> two, one, <laughs> boom. Yay! Oh. Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast again. <laughs> I'm Big Z. And I'm Ian with Full Throttle Battery. And we are still joined by Mr. Blake Wilkie himself and special guest, Russ. What's your last name, Russ? Porter. Porter, god dang it. I am the worst with names. Jesus. It's just WrestleMania, dude. WrestleMania. Yeah, we can go with WrestleMania. That's uh, cool. Let's uh, do I'm it. game. All right, yeah, why not? We have the Russ Media from Buggy <laughs> Whip joining us today. Uh, we are at UTV Takeover Coos Bay 2021, and uh, it's already been a pretty eventful day. Uh, how about for you, Blake? Oh, yeah. What have you oh, been yeah. up to today? Uh, we scouted for the Method Oasis run that we're hosting tomorrow. We got some uh, cornhole bo- boards from a fan. We watched Al McBeth go big uh, in his new car. Big into... Uh, a unique type of car catch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll he'll, be, he'll get it fixed. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, did some some bad wheelies uh, or some good wheelies uh, in the wheelie f- contest. Just covered some ground, and now we're here. Yeah, you've been all over the place, running around with your head chopped off. Um, Ian, what have you been up to? I smell terrible, man. No, that's just me. <laughs> yeah. You're just smelling me. <laughs> I don't think I've smelled this bad in probably a no. long time since no, I was a teenager. I don't even know how you guys are tolerating me. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I have COVID on my side to uh, still be impacting my sense of smell and taste over since Thanksgiving last L- year. So. Lucky you. <laughs> but uh, Ru- Russell, you came in kind of late into the into the event game. Uh, what's going on? Uh, today or just in no, general? No, no, just showing up. Like... Yeah, we got here and had fun, and we're over there selling product. And this morning we went to the BK Lounge with Ian, and that was an interesting experience. And <laughs> it was new. And yeah, they messed up and put cheese on my sandwich. That's probably why I probably smell bad. <laughs> What's the BK BK Lounge Burger King? Yeah, dude. Dude, I got I, a crazy I, story. Dude, I've night. never seen anybody so stoked for Burger King in my life. They lock the, the no joke. They lock the actual window, the drive up window, with a deadbolt because. She quote unquote tweakers be tweaking. Ah, oh. well, we, we are in Oregon. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> it was it was a different wow. experience. It was it was unique. Wow. Yeah. So it, like they locked it, unlocked it every time they had to like, yeah. come to the window. Yeah, literally tweakers be tweaking. That's what she said. Huh. That just needs to be a vinyl sticker on their window. Like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's a unique place. We went to we uh, grabbed McDonald's last night, and as we're driving through, the guys like uh, we're closed, and. Uh, uh, How late were you guys out? Jesus, it must have been past 10. Yeah, it was late. And yeah. Kyle yelled out, uh, can I get, uh, from Dune to Detroit, can I get nuggets? And the guy goes, I got 20. And he goes, no, I got 30. And we pull up to the window. And he goes, no, we're closed, man. Here's your 30 nuggets. Have a good night. And just gave them to us. Well, yeah. Well, that's the way to swing it, I guess. Yeah. You just go at closing cool. time. Yeah. I, it's a I, different I love how Zach said you guys must have been out past 10. Like, that's late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything shuts down. It's weird. It's super early here. Well, it's just because I'm used to being behind the desk until like 2.30 in the morning and then crashing until <laughs> okay. five when I wake up at these events. So, yeah, and I, and I woke up at five today to go take a shower and realized I didn't have a towel after I took my shower. So that was great. Choose a sock, T-shirt. Uh, you know, they have those, <laughs> those hand warmer things in the bathrooms where they dry your hands off. God, I, I just got a visual. Did you use that for your beard <laughs> or other places? <laughs> my feet were nice and toasty. Let's put oh, it that nice. way. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we have a, a great event going on. We got lots of people out. Uh, Blake, you got Shreddy here uh, doing yeah. some merch sales. You got Aaron and those boys over there. Aaron and Nate. They're yeah. holding it down, man. Very fortunate to have them here with us. Yeah, you guys got a solid crew going on. So you guys been out filming, vlogging, doing some stuff? Yeah, I mean, just to show people, like, what our experience is like through our eyes with what we're doing when we're pawn skimming, getting stuck, going over things that we shouldn't probably be going over, getting high setted, jumping off the off the cliffs at the beach and stuff, <laughs> over driftwood, like... If it if it looks fun, we're doing it, and we've covered a lot of ground in my my pro XP um, Polaris, and so far she hasn't skipped a beat. Will my drone guy, he he rolled it today. <laughs> so let's bring that up. <laughs> you uh you guys went and joined us at Willie uh, at uh, Hillfest where we yep. race up and down the hill, and uh, you did a little exposition run on it and yep. took the bug and not quite as nimble as the short little tight corners it needs to be but you had fun on it oh yeah just making some noise i mean uh since it's all kind of uphill um yeah with the with the rear weight and how hard the paddles dig the front the front end gets light and pushes a little yep. if i had a little bit more speed i could use the cutting brake and kind of flick it around a little bit more so but it being all first gear for the the big car it was a little hard but there's a popper at the end where we got 
to get a big yeah it looks like you wheelie. had the uh, wheels up in the air all the way through the finish line yep oh uh, yeah I, I had to at least show about a little <laughs> bit you know <laughs> had to show what you could do so yeah. me and your cinematographer have something in common we got a little wheel time on the rzr we'll be about that hashtag fake wilkie life yeah. <laughs> <laughs> imposter oh dude yeah i did see a couple of people being like where's wilkie this isn't him like <laughs> so, like he doesn't have a gray beard <laughs> <laughs> who's that guy where did he kidnap blake to yeah uh, but uh, then homeboy Will went up in the in the Pro XP and decided that uh, he was in a full send in the first corner. <laughs> and uh, you made it one corner. He Outst- did make one corner. He did make one hairpin. <laughs> he did. Ah. He has a side by side too. I think he just was excited. <laughs> <laughs> he was just in it to win it, man. Stretches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was the croc life over there. Yeah. Gotcha. And Oh, for Hillfest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. So uh, that was a good time. Uh, Hillfest is always a good entertaining show. There was a few guys that flipped him over and all that. So so how's the event treating you guys? Awesome. Yeah. It, there's nothing like it up here. It's just the scenery is unbelievable. There's I don't think there's any dunes or yeah. riding in the world like this. It's truly out of this world. So you and I have known each other since 2016, and... Uh, I, I made the comment before you walked in. I'm like, there's always nine people that needs needs his attention. And you and I got to go out for about two hours on your newly tuned X3. That was a good time. What would you think? Yeah. that the, the, it, So, true story, Evo and Shock Therapy, Jeffrey's performance went out of their way. And they rebuilt the car from the ground up. We pulled it apart on Wednesday of last week, found out that the head was blown overnighted ahead to San Diego. Uh, drove it out Wednesday afternoon to Jeffrey's performance. They stayed all night, put the car together, ran into more issues, put a big turbo kit on it. Um, car is phenomenal. We got it back, literally assembled it at 3.30 in the morning and drove 22 hours straight here. Things pushed in over 355 horsepower. It almost, Ian drove it first 10 feet it was here and wheelie did it's out of this world. Can't say enough. If you have never done Evo's big power kit, there's it's it's a whole new experience shock therapy did uh iqs on the car did all the live valving and everything on it total game changer you can firm that car up there was nothing out here that we've hit so far that didn't soak it up it's 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 like being back in a sand car totally has changed completely everything i could imagine about a utv what was the what was the base model uh xrs x3 xrs two-seater Two-seater, 2017, yep. actually. Yeah, so okay. rebuilt the whole thing from 17. It's one of those setups when you get done riding it, your face hurts. You've been smiling so hard. It, yeah. it, it goes. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to try that. It's literally, it's like your bug, dude. Like, That's when I like. rode in your bug, I, my whole body w- it was tight, but I was just grinning ear to ear. I'm like, I can't believe I don't yeah. When Ian have gets one into a car <laughs> and it goes fast in a way that he can't control but is getting 100% all the smiles, <laughs> he giggles like this little squirrel girl that just makes everyone else around him. Of giggle too. <laughs> you see that? Fair enough. <laughs> so no, like, it's it's amazing. I mean, it's literally like being a little kid again. I, I've come from the sand car world and driven sand cars my whole life, and the UTV is phenomenal. I mean, to get in sand and snow and dirt and trails and rocks and anything you can imagine. And, but, and trees. And trees. I <laughs> yeah. What happened there? <laughs> I ran out of talent. I mean, I thought the trail was bigger than it was, and I went down and ran severely out of talent and. We got it in the first tree, and <laughs> Speed Strap got me out of that one. And then I hit a second tree, back to back, and, and then back yeah. like yeah. like eight feet from each other, <laughs> like literally one tree into another tree, full send. And then Ian got you out of that one. <laughs> yeah, and then we called Ian in with the rescue with the rescue winch, and uh, we pulled me out of the tree car was uh it was uh, the tree was holding it up it was buried in the tree did, full send did you go oh, on, did you go on the night ride last night i did not okay no. tonight's the night so last night while we're pulling him out of the tree we were starting to hear yxz's they're unmistakable we start to hear all these cars just railing through the dunes i'm like oh man it's night ride so i'm like double timing it trying to help russ get out and we get him out we're coordinating on the radio and as soon as everybody's ready to go we're like go catch him we sent uh, taylor from amped off-road out to go find the night ride we found it about 10 minutes later and rejoined it i think we were in about 
uh, maybe 200 cars back somewhere in there and I think we probably finished in the top 50 or top 100 man it was uh, that was a good ride how many people do you estimate were on that night ride they say 600 600 dang tonight yeah. 600 be cars 700 probably plus I've seen the crowd fill in today for sure there it's, was some carnage out there it's oh. it's almost doubling every day that the event goes on uh, from Wednesday so wow yeah I expect that we're going to hit the thousand mark tonight but after that night ride we went on a real night ride <laughs> it, it, have you not done the night ride um, not at, not at this event yet just because of other obligations that I've had we and, did Oklahoma uh, yeah we did Oklahoma yeah yeah, yeah but uh, I mean I saw it from hanging out over here by yeah. the booth seeing all the cars come over the hill and it's like after f- 10 minutes and there's still cars coming it's like <laughs> where are these coming from are they doing like a circle like what's crazy is like unreal. i was up here at where they started and i was going down the line like okay this is cool there's a lot of cars here whatever and then i got past all the sand camping the, the drag strip and everything where everybody was and then it just opened up into a field of more cars like because i was trying to film it with the gopros or whatever and it was like it just got bigger and bigger as i went and then they all decided to take off and I was like, oh, now I'm stuck in the middle and I am borrowing this X3, you know, that I've never driven before and never had paddles on before. And I just mashed that thing and, and was going at it. And I, like you, caught up by the end of it going north. I was pretty much at the beginning. It was pretty fun. You got that Taylor Dunn X3? That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, little golf cart? Yeah, it, it, it works. It's, it's Looks kind like of a roller mini-me. skate. It's a kind of a fat guy, little jacket type scenario. Yeah. But um, it does pretty good. And I was pretty impressed. So uh, it gets a little squirrely. It's narrow. But. I, not to not to jump ship uh, and change subjects too hard here. But to but, change subjects. Well, to change subjects. <laughs> so in 2016 at Pomona, uh, Luke Soft Road, you were set up there, and you were in the booth as well. Back then, man's had short hair. And, like, that's... I that's, did? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, what's that? What year? Uh, 16 or 17? Somewhere uh, in there? It might have been trimmed up, but it was definitely not... Might have been oh, it wasn't, back. it wasn't, like, short, short. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Shorter. You, you guys got some history. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. How'd you guys yeah. meet? Yeah, let, let's, let's jump into that. Dude, I don't even know, but it's been at least probably a decade. A long time. I met you yeah. through Rick Molmeister. Okay. Who knew your mom. He, true. Oh, my from God. From the desert in Glamis. That's like a second father. That dude's crazy. What they used to do in Glamis and Buttercup was yeah. unreal. The shit that I saw when I was growing up going to Glamis when it was core and as raw as it could be compared to today, it's just no comparison. There's nothing like Rick. He's the most interesting man you'll ever meet in your life. Smart. <laughs> most interesting man in the world? He's pretty close. He's the only, I think only guy, only guy in the world that has a 250R three-wheeler street, street legal. legal. Really? He has a picture yeah. from Dirt Wheels in 1986, He still cruises it. Eight, yes, to this day. Wow. Still cruises. He somehow they made a mistake when he bought it, and he was able to go down the DMV. He registered it, and in 1986 or 87, whatever it was, they have a picture of him down the 805 driving in the freeway, middle of the freeway, on this three-wheeler. Wow. I've ridden that three-wheeler. Yeah. It's really? Rad. Yeah. Still wow. to this day, he drives it on the freeway. He gets pulled now over every gr- time. And now he's just grandfathered in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Says he never misses anything. No payment, no registration, nothing. So they won't take it away from him. How, how, imagine being that sh- that highway patrol guy, like, pulling this. <laughs> he's not pulled over <laughs> He's in his car. He's like, this prick's going down the road in a three-wheeler. I'm going to pull him over. And then he gets his, like, what? Now what? They now what do you go. do? <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> nothing. He's, yeah, Rick's a super interesting guy. But I met Blake through Rick introduced me to Blake and I went down to Blake's shop and met Blake and we headed off and Blake's honestly just he's been a friend and probably the most humble guy in this industry ever I mean I just you can't say enough good things about him true story about Blake the reason one of the reasons I have the most respect for Blake out of anything is I was shopping at a store once this little blonde girl comes up to me and she says are you the guy Russ from Buggy Whip and I said yeah yeah and she goes man I was at a party with Blake and Blake was talking about you and how cool you were and I guess you own some whip company and so on and so forth and had this whole big story about how much Blake appreciated me and the company no cameras were on there just partying at some party in the middle of night and she bought whips because of that and I use that example to this day. I say Sorry. that. I didn't even know that. Yeah. There's nobody on the face. You can get product. You can go out there. You can take a thousand pictures of it. You can post all over YouTube. But truly what makes somebody special is when the cameras are off and that person has enough respect to still talk highly of you and your product. There's nobody 
in the world that does it better than Blake. And I told Rigid that and, you know, everybody I meet that asks about Blake, Ian and I have had this conversation for hours on end. For sure. About how uniquely special Blake is to this industry and what he does. I mean. Well, if your products suck, I'd tell you. Yeah. They don't suck. <laughs> I mean, he rolled it today all the way over and it just, it bent the, my whip tab and I was like. This, this is the third roll that I've had in my car, and the whip's still alive, and That's rad. the tab is breaking off. That's rad. Yeah. That, yeah, whip, made, well. that whip made the sand bleed. <laughs> <laughs> but, buggy whips, we break cages. Stuck in the <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, we, that's legit. He and I have had conversations about that. I've literally walked up behind you, and you didn't know I was there, and I've caught you talking about our battery. That's what's it, up. It's, it's ridiculous. That's right. Yeah, yeah no. It, well, awesome, I mean, man. you guys make a good product. Like I said, if it, if you guys made bullshit, then I'd call bullshit and be like, <laughs> yeah, I ain't running this bullshit. <laughs> because that's that's the kind of the standard that I hold myself to. You know, it's not always about the dollar. It's about the product, and you got to be able to stand behind the product. Got to be reliable. Well, yeah. when you're the face, right, like you, yeah. it, you take it personal. It's yeah. not just like a company advertising. It's, it's, it's your you. word, too, you know. Yeah. You are your brand, and yeah. if you go back on that word, yeah. you've lost all credibility. Any, any customer yeah. that sees you double cross one time is instantly lost if every you, piece of respect. And if you wrap some stuff in, in off road that's crap, you're li- you can be you could hurt people for yeah. real. I mean, it's no joke out there. You go out there on a night ride with 400 cars, man. You're in the wrong gear. It's bad. Could wind up being a bad situation. Yeah, for totally. sure. Well, I think that's where people lose the whip industry. Is that it really is a safety device? I mean, it really legitimately can save your life. I mean, especially out here. I mean, these hills are non-directional, so you're coming over. It's not like Glamis where there's this flow to it, even. Though there's traffic out there where you tend to kind of get in a bowl and flow with it. This is flat out as fast as you want to drive coming at you. I mean, it, it really can save your life, and it's important that you do build that product that can do that. When I talk about your product, I call it a task light. You yeah. know? Yeah, I Appreciate mean, y- you want that display mode crap that's flickering just to try to be flossy? Like, it's, it's a purpose-built tool, right. for real. Yeah, like, I I've followed it. people in the dust, and the only reason I can see them is because of your whip. I appreciate. It, that. I mean, is isn't that how Buggy Whip started? Was in the in the industry of of like yeah yeah like mining construction. Uh, my grandfather actually started it in 1967 up in Pismo Beach and sold it from there and then moved it into the mining industry and now we're in trophy trucks and off road and class 11 and UTVs and Jeeps name and it. you name an industry out there and we're building it. We're actually now building arms that come out for on tanker trucks inside of gasoline when they drop gasoline off. Actually whips that extend his arms out so that it blocks traffic and just, just the sky's the limit of where you can keep pushing this and where you can keep going and what we can do and that's what we want to do we want to build a great product so that it works no matter the situation i don't know where you're going to use it in you know today we're here maybe tomorrow blake's using it in snow and 50 degree weather you know oh, you yeah. never know where you're going to use it and so i do you want to make sure you use a product that make a product that works across all platforms so that everybody can use it i mean we use it in north idaho to light up an entire mountainside yeah i don't have a dome <laughs> light we don't have a camp light i just turn that thing on we're good yeah i appreciate that i have a, a wand that plugs in my cigarette lighter or you can put tongs on it i have both of them and i have a, a one foot white light in the my toolbox in my truck <coughs> almost died and anything i need where i need a light i just plug that thing in and then it's like my my magic wand <laughs> yeah. Shredder Harry Potter over here. Hashtag Dude. sword fight. You, uh, you want to know a true story oh. about your magic wand? Huh. The, the true story. So you talk about reach, right? You talk about like affecting people's days or, you know, it, you never know what you're going to do, say what's going to end up on a camera where you, where that travels across plane. So we deal with a mining company, one of the biggest mining companies in the world. And the reason they came to us, no joke, the guy said, I was on YouTube with my kid and he said i watch every video blake wilkie does he's my hero watch every video and blake used it when originally back when it was the car and he raced i forget what race it was battle of prim with battle of prim car. yeah all and teal car was all teal yep all teal and he had the whip and he used it as a task light and the guy literally signed us up for their entire mining contract based upon that video wow two totally separate industries right 
but the crossover, I mean, the crossover as Blake has is just out of this world. I mean, the, the amount of people he affects on a daily basis. So you just never know what you're going to say or do or what video is going to be out there, where that where you're going to get that return on investment or where you're going to find it. It's amazing. It's yeah, you awesome. you, you yeah. work with quite a few people, but I, I think they all have something in common. We're, we're all fans, man. Well, I appreciate that. I'm just a long-haired coop <laughs> trying to <laughs> wheelie and bark and have a good time with uh, everyone and anyone, man. So you're out there racing class 11 and you're also running oh. the bug around and uh so like you're kind of one of those guys that's like half free rider half racer like what yeah. what kind of gets you going or is it a little bit of everything just being behind the wheel i mean building cool things and then thrashing them and finding the limits and how far you can stretch it and then building something new you know i mean uh we have the hammerhead we have the death boat we have the class 11 slug shark we have the baby shark the polaris uh then we got megalodon and now we're building jaws the trophy truck so it's it's kind of always been the goal you know as a kid like trophy trucks look like huh you know every kid wants to to drive a trophy truck and go as fast as you can and um i think we're we're almost there man to to, to finalize on that dream come true and our goal with the TT is to go race and obviously do our best, but it's going to be hard to compete with people that have multi-million dollar budgets. And uh, we're building it all in-house, and uh, we just want to share our, our build series and our story getting there. And then kind of the experience, the emotion, and uh, our our race efforts. and. And at the end of it, win by having the most fun. Yeah. I think that, I think one of the biggest compliments I can give you is the fact that you've made it accessible. Like, I think people see that and they're just like, man, this guy's doing it. And I, th- I, c- I see how he's doing it. And I think I got a plan where I can probably jump into something like that. I think that's the coolest thing. Uh, and, it, and you really have to respect the fact that you guys aren't just like paying for something to get done. Oh, no. Like you're fully invested into this. Like you're putting in the elbow grease, you're putting in the hours, your hands show <laughs> the evidence of what's going on. Right. Like, oh, yeah. and, uh, that whole like built, not bought mentality is kind of gotten cliche, you know, yeah. over the years, but there's a real truth behind, you know, the passion that goes into something when you build it, you can see the result of that versus somebody that just built it because that's what they're being paid to do. Yeah, and my boy Kevin, uh, Kevin Butts with Quixotic Motorsports, he's uh, he's my roommate, and uh, he's got a big chunk of the shop out of our home base, and he designed self-taught SolidWorks Guru, and he's been around the scene forever. So his uh, my idea, my mind, my concept, he took that, ran with it, and we're using like some of the latest and greatest technology to to be able to duplicate or fix this in a timely manner with the TT bug. But um, the goal with the TT bug was obviously has been like five, six years in the making. It's not like I want to do this. It's like it's been a methodical process. And uh, the class 11, the reason behind the class 11 was I want to get my feet wet, wet into racing. It's not going to cost it's not going to cost much. It's going to cost under 15 grand to build this race car. Go get our feet wet. We all saw Rage at the River where they did the land rush start again, and there's right. 20 bugs going down the right. moon bumps. And I was like, that looks cool. It falls into my bug category. Yeah, it's not the craziest, but I think I can shed a little light on the little guys and bring this class up and go from the bottom to the top, all staying within the, the regiments of a bug and uh have a have a hoot doing it so i i when you started that project i was totally intrigued just because it's it's old school new school like it's a mash and i love i love when things blend like that and and i didn't even realize that that was still a racing scene like you know i'm not huge into racing but i i know enough like i can generally keep up with stuff but i never knew that the they were still such a hot thing going on and i know it's not like a huge class there's not like a hundred cars or anything but uh, it really was like the people that do that are doing it because they're passionate about it. They're having Absolutely. fun doing it. They're having a, a, you know, a love fest with the idea of racing these things through the desert and having a good time challenge. I, I think what we're talking about here kind of exposes a dialogue that you and I have talked about where California is almost a different country. There's what's going on there. And then there's what's going on in the rest of the country. You know, like oh, the, yeah. the music's different. The culture is different. The racing and stuff like that. That's what. Honestly, that's what's so cool about this event right now. Some of the some of the top UTV dogs from Glamis are here, and they're loving it. 
you know, and they're seeing that there's some fast guys in the Northwest. But like when I when I tell somebody that my my ultimate dream would be like a like a class <laughs> one or a sand car or something like that, most people up here don't even know what that is. They don't know a class one from a freaking uh, Subaru STI. You know, talk talk about that a little bit because. You and I have talked recently where you were saying you were out at Glamis at nine years old and you were in that right in that ballpark, too. Right? I was naked as a baby there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Kind of kind of talk about that culture and how it impacted your life. I'll let you go first. You're older. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I mean, the, the thing that's really interesting about Glamis is it, the thing that I don't think I mean, you find it here. Definitely. I, the, the thing about off road and especially climates is you can literally be in a camp with somebody that has a billion dollars and five million dollars in cars and three motor homes and the guy camp next to him is on a dirt bike and he's 16 years old and his hero is blake wilkie and he's gotten put all his pennies in to get there and they're riding the same dudes hanging out at the same fire talking the same stories i mean that's just there's nothing in the world there's no place i've been that you experience that kind of love for each other and that love for a sport like you do in glamis and it's amazing i mean when we travel to the midwest or up here or anywhere you hear people talk about you know their dream is to go to glamis and experience this this way of life where just everything kind of washes away and it's just there's something magical about it you know this community comes together to be part of something bigger than all of us and it's really nice that's a great way to explain it because that that place glamis impacts people like their whole life centered around that hobby yeah, I, I mean, it, it it drains your pocketbook. I like mean, this dude right here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> living proof, man. Yeah. I mean, since I've been uh, a baby, running around there naked with my mom and pops, and I mean, I still do the same same stuff, but just not naked. <laughs> Well, or that we know about. <laughs> it's not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or is it? You, you, you go fast. You go fast enough. Like we Wilkie wouldn't notice. Fans. Me and my girlfriend sometimes go get lost out there. <laughs> we'll be we'll be starting to onlyfans.com slash Wilkie works. <laughs> <laughs> there is a hot yeah. springs in Glamis. There is the the, the, the oasis. I mean, yeah. uh, little gypsies go there. Yeah, I'm not gonna share exactly what it's called, but you guys can have to figure <laughs> it out. But if you do go there, respect it because uh, it's one of those things that could get taken from us very easily. For sure. But uh, there's usually naked old men there, not really. Yeah. Naked hot chicks, so beware. Yeah. Could I get a pin drop on that or? <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll send it to you. Sick. So, uh, but back circling back to what the kind of the SoCal scene is. I mean, it's always been the mecca, the hub, and I grew up racing dirt bikes and going to the desert, and dirt bikes were my thing forever, but getting exposed to Rick at a young age and his his buggy and kind of what they did, um, I always wanted something with, with four wheels and a cage for at night because the bike wasn't, you know, the best option. Um, and then that's where I developed the skills to, to build um, off-road capable vehicles, and I mean, it's just, you, you see what the dunes, you see like the, the latest and the greatest cars. Um, a lot of people with, uh, you know, ex disposable incomes or bank accounts to, to dump into the sport. So like, it's usually one of the premier spots for new builds, new parts, the latest, greatest. But I mean, up until four years ago, I was sleeping on my trailer in a tent with a freaking easy up over it. And now, you know, people vibe with us and always want pictures and autographs and it wasn't necessarily part of the game plan for me personally, but um, I would say that Glamis and the work ethic and the, the vehicles have opened up a whole new career path for me personally. And uh, I can, I don't think I could be in this position today if it wasn't for for Glamis kind of always having that that desire to to have that next next latest and greatest cool car or, or at least put my own spin on it to where it was something that the big dogs with the money wanted to purchase or at least were paying attention to, you know? I don't know who it was, but uh, somebody told me a story about you once that even at like age 11, 12, you were calling your shot, just saying, I'm going to build a bug. It's going to oh, be yeah. the gnarliest thing out there. And yep. you did. <laughs> it took so many hurdles, man. I mean, it, it, it had a... When it was red and it was raw, it had a 1915 
VW motor, and then I was going to put a 22R turbo in it and ditch that and got a Subaru. Um, blew the 2.0 up, put a 2.5 in it, found a Chenoweth, took out a loan, borrowed some money from my grandma. Uh, that Chenoweth that had a really badass, the motor that was in it when I sold it, and the Mendiola with the Motec system, stripped all that out, sold the chassis, sold my old trailer because it came with the trailer and ended up spending like, sold the, the Subaru, the 091, and ended up being about 3,500 bucks for out of pocket to do the mo- the whole motor swap in trans in Motec and it was wow. like you know and then paid my grandma back and it was just like it was always kind of that like I gotta find a way or figure out a way to make it work you know and uh, it was just persistency man you know it, and a lot of luck and uh, just putting the time in so one of the things that Russ and I were talking about earlier is is kind of that um non-stop grind that goes yeah. into a lot of this right like a lot of us are in the shop for a couple hours a night working on something or wrenching or replacing something or whatever and uh you're basically just 24 7 non-stop <laughs> grinding on your car or or on your business or or whatever kind of what's what's the difference in perspective you know when you look back at when you were young in glamis and you were you know, struggling to find funds that do stuff. And, and you had that, the, the passion, it, it, has it changed at all? Has it evolved at all? Like how, what's the mindset difference between being super hungry and, and, and having that vision to now having a few under your belt and, and now having the experience and looking at the future and, and this TT and, and some of these other things, how has that evolved over time? I mean, well, it's, it's evolved with the different scope of projects. So, you know, it's not like I'm building the same rear engine car over. It's like we're building a boat. So, like, I, I'm, I'm able to expand, you know, into a whole other water sport or, like, into the big league racing, into the, the challenge that a stock bug gives you in the Class 11. So, it, it keeps it fun and it keeps it really exciting because it's like every vehicle has their own skill set in right. the space that you're kind of thrashing with them. So, it's like it's fun you know the jeep's got the rock crawling capabilities the razor's got the speed and the agility and the water skimming and and all that so i mean for me the affordability too yeah (laughs) yeah no that's a big deal yeah and luckily you know with having the right parts and stuff i'm not having to backtrack and Hey guys, just wanted to say thanks for sticking around in this episode. It's been a great episode so far. Uh, we had about a 15 minute uh, technical difficulty that resulted in the loss of the audio uh, in this segment of the uh, podcast. So I apologize for that. The conversation continued as uh, we talked about, um, you know, the passion behind building, the passion about how to, um, you know, continue grinding towards something that you believe in. Uh, it was a great uh, number of points made by uh, Blake and Russ. Um, unfortunately, those uh, 15 minutes of gold didn't make it to the hard drive. So, uh, sorry about that. We'll do better in the future. And uh, let's get back to the show. Somebody from, you know, a kid like Ruslan or younger to somebody that's 80 or 90 years old and everything from a stock car to a $250,000 UTV. I mean, the entire spectrum of age, gender. I mean, just look at what it's done. I mean, look at look at women and girls that are now in racing and racing UTV and building these classes. And it's amazing to see not only the evolution of UTV, but just human beings in general and where the sport's going and how involved it is in the community. It's just out of this world. Three, three, yeah, for sure. Three years ago, I was in Chicago for a procurement meeting for Polaris and they have their market bre- market segments broken down every one of them regarding off-road is over a billion yeah wow it's off the charts wow so they're giving back hard it's, it's insane yeah yeah and it's not even just in this country. I mean, you talk, we talk to, I, I talk to people, I'm sure Blake, you know, Blake's been oh, yeah. to the Middle East. I mean, you talk to these people, it's every country, every aspect of the world, your, you can now, your reach is so much further. And one car is single handedly changed the entire way this industry functions. It's just unreal. And I kind of feel like that car was the 14 RZR 1000. Like I, I rode in that car and my, my brother-in-law, uh, I was a bike guy, man. I thought I thought UTVs were for people that couldn't ride motorcycles. I'm right. Serious. And yeah. I, I get behind the I got behind the wheel of that, and I pulled it over, and I looked at him and just going, 
you just bought a twenty thousand dollar trophy truck. I totally get it now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm out. He, I'm out there in all my moto gear in a hundred degree day in freaking Hungry Valley, California. He's in flip flops drinking beer. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the other thing too that's amazing about UTVs that at least I've learned recently, really, in, at going to Mud Nationals was. You know, you get lost in this world of glamis where it's big horsepower, right? Got to have more horsepower. Got to. What's the next limit? How fast can I go? But UTV and Spectrum, from it, from players to Honda, are so drastically different, right? And as Utah grows and in places like San Hollow grow, and there are these new meccas for off road. It's not about horsepower. So the Honda Talon may be a perfect car for the guys in the mud. You know, it does everything they want to do from the factory or the, the Players Razor, the K&M. There's so many. One car single-handedly can change your entire environment. It's just amazing what that's done. And I think that goes right. Like when the KRX came out, everybody's like, oh, it's so slow. It's so heavy. And it's like there's a market for it like every Rock car calling. has a we, we were talking about the other night like every car has a huge industry to it because they all have a, a thing that they do well right it, it may not be what you're wanting to do well but it does something well for somebody yeah we're like 30 feet right now from steve bouchard from rugged radio and, and he told me in his krx he did the rubicon trail without even freaking getting out to spot a line you know yeah. it, it's super capable yeah it's just an amazing i mean it's just amazing how and all these manufacturers are building cars for their audience base and for what they're doing. And so it, it, it's just going to be super interesting to see where, I mean, we all know the rumors of what's coming next. And I think we're all excited to see where the industry gets pushed to next. And it's going to be really interesting. And nobody's spending any money because they want to see what's coming next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seeing, I've seen a lot of lot of the, the new side-by-sides that are coming out. And There's it's just crazy how they're, yeah. the bar just every year continues to just get elevated. You know, I might have to build one. No. I, I think <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I think there's, uh, you know, we, like you were saying, players kind of gets, doesn't get some of the recognition that a lot of people that are new to this market, you know, they don't know that history, right? For sure. And I think this new, um, this upcoming season, I would call it, of UTVs uh, that we're about to enter into, we're going to see Polaris actually being one of those people that's actually lobbying the government for, you know, regulations and things like that. And we shouldn't be scared of that because they did that the first time they went and pushed regulation to figure out how to make this work. And it right. was those regulations that allowed them to grow this off-road industry. You know, when you, yeah. when you don't have those boundaries, you can't, fit within them I, I would love to talk to somebody that has a long-term history in marketing with polaris like i don't think anybody understands the influence that company's had in off-road and yeah. what they've got their hands in you know stuff that's not even related to polaris like legislation type stuff this that and the other like the more the more you go down that rabbit hole the more you hear about some pretty crazy stuff and you know everybody has their favorite car but that company in particular we're pretty lucky to have them I, and I think you guys nailed it with the regulations. I mean, I think, you know, I was talking to a gentleman the other day about regulations, and I don't think really you come out here and we ride, but nobody really knows what goes on behind closed doors and how much is moved through regulations to make this. I mean, there's CARB approved. There's all this stuff that the government wanting to do, and you've got companies like Polaris and Can-Am and Honda fighting that. I mean, it's not just off-road in general going out and it's cool that they've given us all these cars. I mean, they're fighting behind the scenes. I mean, we see it with Oceana Dunes and Pismo, Great and we time. see how much the government wants to close down our riding space, and you have these companies. I mean, players bought Glamis. Right. I mean, what company <laughs> buys buys a section of Glamis to throw a party? I mean, come on. I mean, it's like, you know, so awesome. how far these companies are willing to spend billions and trillions of dollars so that we can go out and enjoy this beautiful world we have is, I don't think anything that any of us will ever realize behind closed doors what they're doing. For sure. Definitely. Yeah, and you know when we talk about regulation, we, a lot of times we just we assume the worst out of it, right? Like we just assume government bad, rules bad. We're out here to be free. Let us be free, and that and, and a lot of us just we assume that that mentality goes across the board to products, to cars, to you know a lot of things, and and a lot of times we just get over zealous with our opinions and we don't take time to think about the impact that those statements make and and a lot of times those statements act, end up hurting our abilities especially when they make it up to local government and things like that so 
This is a great dialogue for four dudes that have collectively over the last 72 hours had about 10 hours of sleep. <laughs> so. Speak for yourself. I got eight hours last night. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, but I am still pretty beat. The sun all day. <laughs> Are you at the Red Lion? Yeah. I literally think we're next door. Your your voice is unmistakable, and I hear... I, what room? I, I, we're on a lower level. Um, um, what are we, 321? Okay, we're not we're not close, man. Yeah. Two thirty one. Three twenty one. I'm gonna write that down. Wait for it. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I'll give him. I'll give him room forty two. Uh, yeah, forty two. Two forty. Two forty. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, I think there's a huge dialogue to be had when we talk about our history and and where we've come from and and not only personally but our industry. And I think that a lot of people take for granted where we're at right now, in compared to where we were five years ago, ten years ago. And, uh, but th- that being said, sleeping in a tent, sleeping in a tent. And we've, <laughs> we've done that, <laughs> yeah. but or about the campfire, but, uh, <laughs> I love that. But the, the next, the next season in our industry is going to be highly dependent on our ability to be humble and be willing to adapt. And like, we got so many things like hybrids coming electric ones, like Polaris is coming out with an electric Ranger. That's like an actual legit Ranger, Sick. not just a fake one. Um, you know, we got a lot of things that are coming down the pipe because the government is trying to control, you know, the future. And we got to rely on these big guys to help. And we have to be supportive of them. And if we don't like what they're doing, we need to let them know what we think the solution should be, not just complain. Yeah, I've talked to uh, probably about three or four tuners, you know, pretty much renowned tuners in the UTV industry talking about electric. And and they're all over it. They've got orders in. They've made calls. They want to be at the pinnacle of what gets developed as it pertains to electric vehicle. I mean, they're so fast. As you should. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. No, but there's nothing wrong with electric. I mean, look at what they're doing with electric. It's amazing. Like, I don't know. After Blake landed that wheelie and got on the gas, man, that uh, is just, there's something about that that LS bark. motor, that, that bark that yeah. uh, <laughs> well, you know, it's like it those, shrivels me testes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those, those new BMWs and Mercedes, they have like the in-cab exhaust notes for their electric cars and all that stuff. Really? Yeah. Like I can just see a, a, a day where there's a market for a speaker vendor to be like, we got the exhaust speaker for you. <laughs> Oh. It's so much louder than everybody else's. You can buy Blake Wilkie's exhaust noise right dude. here. Oh, dude, you need to copyright that thing now. Yeah. <laughs> download Will, take it. Notes. Will, take notes. Yeah, you download <laughs> it on iTunes and throw it through the Bluetooth. <laughs> yeah. You need to make that thing a ringtone and sell it. I, I do. I would like one of those for my house, though, because my trash cans I take to the street every Monday suck. I need an electric ranger, baby. <laughs> so speaking of that, you just like completely out of nowhere, just built a whole brand new shop set up. Yeah. What was the story behind that? I cashed out my 401k from construction. Uh, my grandma, God bless her soul, when she passed, uh, left about 30 grand for me that I couldn't touch unless I went towards the house. Um, and then I had like a college fund. I didn't, I went to just community college. So it was super cheap and had a little bit of money on that cash, all that out, found like the perfect house in Ramona, California. It already had uh, a 60 by 35 foot shop on it with agricultural power, a little pump house with a compressor, two and a half acres. I already saw where the pit bike track was going. And <laughs> you all, you saw it the first time you stepped uh, foot on it. The first I saw it on Google maps, I saw where it was at, you know, in relativity to where I was living and kind of the general area that I've grown up my whole life in San Diego and went and saw it and I was like, this is it. You know, it was when COVID was hitting. I know some of my partners had to pull back on some funding uh, for the program and whatnot, but I just knew I had to to make this work, to, to build jaws, to elevate just my program in my life. You know, before everything I made went into like off-road and having fun and, and just living life, you know. But then when I hit 30, I was like, I got to buy a house, you know. So, um, and luckily for with partners that believe in us and let me help sell their product and see a ROI, um, I'm able to do it with the help of full throttle batteries and rest from buggy whip. And uh, we didn't pull back, baby. <laughs> no, full throttle did not pull back. They've been with it, and same with buggy whips. And uh, yeah, so Kevin and Garrett moved up there. We've expanded the shop one direction, and then I won King of the Hammers, ten thousand dollar purse. Nice. Um, and the Congrats, class 11, by the way. which was awesome. And then used all that and then some to, to build it out the other direction. So we're at about 125 by about 35 foot, um, putting us at like 4,000 square feet. 
Uh, there's a sick pit bike track in the front yard. We got a mild and wild line, so that way, like, Groms can come and still rip it. And it's not just, like, you know, uh, deadly for them. <laughs> I don't so, know. I saw some of that mini bike race. It looked pretty sketch. <laughs> yeah. Well, those guys are all going fast, but uh, there's, yeah, kids can still cruise it. But yeah. It's just, dude, it's another dream come true, man. It's another thing where lunch break, you know, like I need to, I'm frustrated with this. I'm going to go burn three laps and then come back and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to tackle this, you know? So it's, it's a, it's a blessing, man. It's a dream come freaking true. And we've, we've invited some locals and some other friends to come and enjoy it with us and, uh, and share a lot of content with everyone online. So Nothing well, I, I, it, I, every time I see that shop, like you post a picture late at night while you're working or whatever, and there's like six bay doors open and yeah. like all that, all the tools everywhere and all the projects everywhere. It's like, man, I'm so jealous of all, I mean, I don't have time for any of that stuff, but if I did, I'd be right there with you. That stuff's so much fun. It well, it's got to be badass to have your own space too, man. Like dry, just yeah. like I took your car out for a recovery mission and, uh, yesterday or the day before and everybody stops and points. And then just are disappointed than a fat dude in a, with a weird beard, <laughs> and a, with an awkward beard was driving it. But yeah, that's got to be cool to have your own space. It it is, man. Um, and and that retention with fans and just giving stickers away and stoking people out. That's what it's all about, man. I mean, we wouldn't be in this place if they didn't watch our videos or they didn't enjoy uh, the gear that we're pumping out and. Uh, and all that, you know, I don't know where 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 it all be, but I'm not mad about it. Well, even in uh, 2019 takeover, that was your first year up here. We brought you up. You did, and uh, that was that went huge. That could not have gone better, man. Like the weather held up, and you know, I I, I was telling you, I was like, I don't think out of 20,000 people that are here, I don't think even 500 have seen big power on sand. And you could not go near your car without a horde of people coming around that thing. You know, if they, if they thought you were going to fire that up, it was just. <laughs> and I've only seen probably like three other LS cars out here. So, I mean, it's it's pretty surreal to see how heavy the scene is in the UTVs. And I mean, I'm sure the accessibility to, you know, a sand rail manufacturer with parts and knowledge to work on those is um, is far and few in between up here. We've seen some old school buggies, which I always get a kick out of and love. But um, yeah, man, it's it's cool to have a big car make noise and see the stoke that it brings when when you're wheeling and jumping or just ripping through the trees, you know. Yeah, I kind of think that like this event has slowly but surely turned into this thing where if if your business is telling stories within the off road community and you aren't here. I mean, I just kind of shrug my shoulders at it, man. Yeah, There's a lot going up. on here, man. Yeah. And I've, I, I've enjoyed, like, when my boys, uh, they're now getting into their teenage years, right? They're, they're getting a little older, and they're starting to dig into, like, you know, Motor Trend and, like, Roadkill and all these, like, kind of scrappy automotive-type shows. And, and they see stuff like this where they're like, you know, I want to get out and, and make something. Like, they're just eyeballing stuff on the side of the road. Can we make that into something we can go off-road with? Like, <laughs> they're like, we can do this. Like, that old Volvo wagon, let's put something in it. Like, what? where can we find a motor? <laughs> And they're totally stoked. And then I see guys like, uh, what's the truck? Uh, Chomp or uh, whatever. Chomp yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that thing's rad. I mean, yeah. but he just wrecked it, like, what, a little while ago and rebuilt it all. So, like, you know, but that's the passion. That's what drives us. Like, we build, we destroy, we rebuild, we have fun. <laughs> we destroy, rebuild, and have some more fun. I mean, look at Dune and Destroy. Yeah. Those guys destroy stuff. Every, I mean, if you went on a car, <laughs> they've, every day they've broken something, every day. including their collarbones. <laughs> yeah, and they're still like, dude, those guys go hard, and then they come back and they build it, and they literally wreck it and go back out and build it. Like, that's impressive, dude. The heart, the heart, and off roads off the charts. You know, like Brent told you, just he stuffed that X3, and he could barely, even, he couldn't Which turn. Time? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like he couldn't turn his neck, couldn't do anything, and when we started talking about Huck Fest, he was just like. Oh, I'm totally going. <laughs> I'm totally yeah, jumping he's, that. He's thing. hurting something fierce right now, but he's he's never give up type guy. Never lift. Orange so. crush, two one two all over the side, two one two gloves. Yeah, <laughs> good dude. Yeah. Then you get like LeBron James gets a baby pinky in the eye and falls down like he just had a heart attack or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. How about Ruslan's new car? You think he's gonna hit, hit that big double? Oh, he's up? sending it. Well, yeah, no, he can't. He can't hit the double. Why? Because that's just that's just for Al. But 
uh, we'll see what happens. I, there was talk about maybe letting something happen, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, there's a lot that goes into that decision. So yeah, um, that's a big jump. But uh, this year's Huck Fest Hill is probably set up to send it to the frickin' moon. Like, even test hits on the initial version of it were sending it well over what it should have and to a flat. So yeah. they had to come with the dozers and move hundreds of yards of sand to make something acceptable that you could land on that without killing yourself. So, safe. yeah, yeah. So they, they had a, to revamp it. They did a, an MX ATV Huck Fest on uh, Thursday. Saw that. And they were doing like 160 feet, 170 feet, something like that. Yeah. It was a big one. And uh, they were sending it pretty something, something good, but they had, to, they had to shape the dunes to do that. And, you know, that's something unique up here. Like these dunes, like this whole section over here is all privately owned. So right. And the owner is like, yeah, let's do this. Let's make this something big. And, and like this whole section up here with all the camping, that used to be a big valley. And he literally made an island of sand <laughs> happen. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, dude, tell me if I got my head up my ass here. Cause like, I'm not comfortable. Yes. I'm not Doesn't comfortable. Like yeah, yeah. Right now, <laughs> I, I have not gotten comfortable, dr- uh, jumping, a four-wheel vehicle moto i've hit stadium triples yeah and i feel fine you know body I, I, english for sure i felt like i had some control over it like this thing is just like if it if you plant you plant if you make it you make it i don't really feel like i've got much control over it well like the the utv um has a little bit more control than something like a bigger heavier car like mine or a truck um essentially because you can brake tap in the air and it drastically changes the characteristics of how the car is flying but that's only you know back to front you know uh, you can rev it out and it'll kind of probably maybe stabilize it a little bit if you're not coming down but then you're landing it's hard on your drivetrain um, with a car once you leave the lip you are almost dead sailing you know you come off sideways you know it's just there's no and the same as moto man like out here if the wind's blowing you're a kite once you're in the air man especially with uh something like mine or like brent's orange crush's Mm -hmm. car um 212 truck with the fiber 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 works works body i mean you can watch my car and videos that we've taken out here when you got a 40 mile an hour headwind and you come off of a lip and there's uh wind coming up under you with all the weight in the rear and that giant hood it just it threw you right back boom yeah Yeah, so um throttle control is a big thing um especially something like my car if it's a long lip you know you got to kind of check at the top and use your momentum and your speed carrying up the face and not stay in it you know i've seen people when glamis come off jumps and buggies and not much experience and destroy the whole back of their car crack blocks you know the whole nine so yeah and there's a handful wild. of people out there that'll just send it you know whereas you and al are a couple of the gnarliest dudes in off-road and i've i've seen you guys go no man that's way too sketchy we got to fix it we got to do this you know and it's yeah. just it's not gonna work it's methodical man i mean especially for me my my time is very valuable with the new build and, and everything so a lot of people are like are you gonna go huck fest and i'm like you know my back's not in the best condition right now and my car is in one piece i don't want to have to go home and fix it i want to build the tt bug to be able to come out here and hit these big booters because the balance on that will be much better than we'll be the first person hopefully in the the utv takeover space to show up with a trophy truck to an event so that's kind of the goal and not only a trophy truck (laughs) the bug trophy truck that doesn't look like any other trophy truck (laughs) no but and those assets are your life livelihood so 100 percent. so you got to protect them i have a few other events that i need to show up with with those so uh and shout out to the you know the design concepts and the creativity that goes into those things like it's not easy let alone you know the artistic side of it is amazing so it it, even just on the cads right uh, the thing looks amazing and and props to you guys for putting that that all together and come how many parts is did that cnc tube cutter cut for you guys i want to say there was like 126 tubes 
Just tubes. Just tubes. Just tubes. Yeah. That's crazy. Like so. you guys stack those all up in your shop there, and you guys it was a whole pallet. Like, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, and uh, luckily everything was engraved um, to where, you know, we had different codes for different diameters and different thicknesses, so we were able to, you know kind of organize everything and they were actually precision tube laser bundled everything up like that so you know ttcb like or ttc say 12 you know you can go look at those and you're like okay there's 20 tubes here boom 12s right here and then we kind of just did pulls but again that's hats off to kevin for his his ingenuity designing all that stuff well, yeah. hats off to you guys, and, and I can't wait to see that thing out ripping and, and the smile on your face when you're out in it because, you know, you get you get so deep into one of these cars for the length of time you have it, right? And then you yep. get kind of, I don't want to say used to it, but you kind of get glassed over with with because you know it so well, right? Yeah. Like, and getting into something new and fresh like that is, is always ex- an experience, and I can't wait for you to have that and, and to be able to have that, that emotion with it. It's just like Russell talking about his new tune, man. I mean, he feels like a kid again, he said, you know? Well, yeah, I think I think that's one of the things that that tune taught me is you don't have to go buy a new car, right? I mean, that's the thing. We we get in this mode of like, oh, if you had it for a year, sell it and buy something new. But there's so many parts available today that you can take a 2017 that's not different than a 2021 and completely rebuild it into a whole new car. And it right. just changes your life, you know? And I think, you know, it's one of the things Blake's really good at is just continuing to evolve his own cars and, and continue to use them and build them into something new. Well, I think we could talk all day about this stuff. I mean, we're, yeah. we're all pretty much into this full time and, and it's our it's our passion. It's our life. And uh, I think it shows in, in everything that's going on and, and what you guys do. So, uh, Blake, we can find you at. Blake Wilkie 357 on IG or Shreddy Life's YouTube channel um, where we do a lot of crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and fun. And fun uh, and Russ, what can we what can we uh, buggy find whip. online? Yeah, Buggy Whip Inc. at Buggy Whip Inc. Dot, you know, for IG or Facebook or YouTube and we appreciate everybody that buys our product I and mean, we can't say thank you enough to without the amazing support of people like Blake and all of our customers, we can't be here. So everybody that buys a whip, we really appreciate it and we want you to know we work really hard to make sure we build you guys a good product. Well, I've I've said it before and i'll say it again dude in, utv shops are all over the place they all wrap a di- you know they wrap different whips of different degrees i've seen i've seen stores that'll have two to three different whip companies you know they might not sell buggy whip to the public but their own personal car has buggy whip on them that says a lot dude <laughs> I, i'm actually kind of shocked by that to be truthful up here you know what's amazing about up here is that you meet a lot of shop owners you know in glamish it's it's tough to there's so many people that you don't necessarily meet the owners of these shops and it's super humbling and i appreciate that the owners that i have met even though they may be selling a different product because that's what their customer base can either afford or wants or whatever it is the owners are running buggy whip and it's really humbling and and really nice to see that those guys rep our stuff up here well i mean i think the product speaks for itself so and you guys got new stuff coming out soon and and you guys will be changing some stuff up and making more stuff for us all to to want and buy and drool over so coming super excited Uh, about it and can't wait to get out there those things that go in the wheels <laughs> yeah Blake, blake's got a new idea he, he he's uh that we're, <laughs> we're gonna work on something cool yeah i think Bring we all got a bunch of ideas <laughs> super old school all right guys well uh check them out online check them on facebook instagram all the places youtube uh you can find us on uh where can they find us on they can find us on find us tiktok tiktok i'm not on tiktok oh that's right yeah, I'm too old for that. They kicked me right off. <laughs> Find us online. <laughs> uh, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, all the different places. And until the next time, guys, peace. Oh,